The primary purpose of Innovative AAC Solutions, the podcast, is to educate and inform. The views expressed during all episodes are solely those of the individuals involved and do not constitute educational or medical advice. They are not necessarily the views of Special School District of St. Louis County. We made it, you guys. We made it. We are in our last episode. It's a mini episode of season four of Innovative AAC Solutions. I'm your host, Laura Hayes, and thanks for joining me this season. I, I've i learned new information. I hope that you have learned some new information all related to literacy and AAC uh, and just kind of taking the next step, right? Whatever that next step is for you and your students how we can support them to be readers, how we can support them towards that journey of autonomous communication. And if you still have questions, know that we're here for you. Know that your AAC facilitators and your AT specialists would love to sit down with you and help you just take the next step. It's not something that needs to be, some some of you may have completely dove into the deep end and that's great and that's wonderful but just know that we're here for you and we're we're here to help you take that next step whatever that step looks like whether it be diving into a new resource diving into the information shared from the amazing guests we've had on this season uh, or or just a new tool just a new implementation tool to build language and connection and remembering that that is our ultimate goal is that authentic communication and social connection for our students So this episode is all about literacy again. Surprise, surprise. (laughs) Our entire season has been about literacy, but we're going to dive into a resource from an AAC company that is completely free. It is on AAC Language Lab called Getting Ready to Read. If you are not familiar with AAC Language Lab, it's one of our favorite supports. We do uh, support subscription for staff for that. So if you don't have one, if you dive into this website and you're like, oh, I want more, uh, definitely contact your AAC facilitator and we can get that going for you. And then uh, if you're a fan of bingo, you'll definitely like this episode because there's the innovative activity is uh, related to bingo in some capacity. Before we jump over, I have one final joke for you. And that is simply that my teacher only taught me 25 letters of the alphabet. She only taught me 25 letters of the alphabet. I still don't know why. Uh, It might take you a second. Hopefully it doesn't, but let that one sink in. I still don't know why. Good stuff. I hope you've enjoyed the jokes. Let me know which one your favorite was. Comment below or shoot us a quick email. Let us know what your favorite support was. Was it a, a tool? Or was it a website? Was it an implementation activity? Was it an interview? We love to hear from you. We love to hear where we're going next too. So next season will be something completely different. Do you have ideas or questions or suggestions, please email and uh, we will get that on the docket because we are here for you. We want to support your learning in every capacity. We know you're busy. We know you're doing the most for your students and, and just doing your best. So enjoy your summers. Thank you for another great season. Um, I'll just let you dive into these last little resources, but again, thanks for listening and uh, enjoy your summers. For this last resource, we wanted to share a conventional instructional program with you for your conventional literacy students. And so this resource comes straight from aaclanguagelab.com. That's A-A-C-L-A-N-G-U-A-G-E-L-A-B.com slash getting dash ready dash to dash read. So that's aaclanguagelab.com slash g-e-t-t-i-n-g dash r-e-a-d-y dash t-o dash r-e-a-d. And we'll also link this in the show notes. But when you go to this tab from AAC Language Lab, you'll see it's a literacy and instructional program that's designed to teach word recognition, decoding, spelling, and icon sequences using the symbol-supported AAC system that your student has. It's important to note that 
this will focus on decoding and word identification. So it doesn't, it's not a full comprehensive pro conventional program um, because you'll still need to work on comprehension, fluency, and writing. But it does give you some significant supports to go alongside that and to supplement your programs that you're using. So the very first thing that you're going to do, um, if you if you notice that, that you'll see there's information and the fact that this is based off of Karen Erickson and her work through UNC Chapel Hill, as well as Gretchen Hanser and Bruce Baker. And uh, there's resources to support the resource here that you can click on. But the very next thing you will do is you will look and you will see and locate the AAC page set that your student is using. So they have everything from Lamp Words for Life, Word Power 42 or 60 basic with symbol sticks, or 42 and 60 basic with PCS board maker symbols. And finally, Unity 60 sequence and Unity 84 sequence. So lots of different software options. If you are not sure which page set your AAC user has, please just reach out to your facilitator and they can help you with that. But let's dive in. So when we dive into our example, this one I just chose was Lamp Words for Life, you can see there's an entire course with lessons that you can print off or use digitally for your instruction. So tell us a little bit about what it is. And then you can see I have five options here for lesson plans, word wall cards, icon cards, letter cards, and other word cards. It's very quick. It's very easy. I can flip it. It gives some examples here. I can hand this over to a communication partner and they know exactly what to do. So that this is just, again, how to use it. Some examples, icon cards, word wall cards, letter cards, and uh, word text itself. And so then if I go to my lessons and download it, you'll be able to see that it gives me the instruction to use my word wall, introduce the words, gives me the materials and what I need for that, and then how exactly I would introduce the lesson, what I say and what I do the materials that go along with it and where to move forward and then how to locate those words on the device. So this example it's showing right now is how to say can by going to the am and the second row, fourth icon across from the left hand side and then going to the drink in the bottom row, fourth from the right where it says can. So it very much gives you a smart chart to kind of figure out where your vocabulary is to target in that lesson in case you need it or someone in the environment needs it. It gives you the icon cards. And keep scrolling. It gives you some smart charts as well. So you can print out any or all of these or you can just use them digitally because each lesson is fairly lengthy. This one that we pulled, this lesson one is 64 pages. So it is quite lengthy, but it, uh, it is very straightforward. And for someone who is trying to introduce it, or again, if you're going out and you need a sub, this is pretty foolproof in how you can hand it over and they can implement this lesson with you or in lieu of you. So that's this is just one lesson. Uh, if we go back, there are 50 lessons that you can cycle through in addition to your other supports and curriculum supports that you have. It also has some um, actual supports here if you need additional help or copyright information. If you have questions, definitely reach out to your facilitator, but this is one we really like because it is supportive of AAC users in a conventional way and overall just the ability to learn literacy and uh, also still have access to robust AAC language. Enjoy. Hey guys, so for this week's activity, this innovative activity is actually called Lingo Bingo. 
other than just having a really fun name to say, this is actually a cool game because it's two games in one. It's got rhyming and phonics. So it's from Learning Resources. It's for two to four players. So great to play in a group. Also one you can probably scaffold depending upon your literacy user's needs. But I'm going to show you first how to play with the rhyming bingo. And then we will talk about word beginning bingo because it's very similar. But you can see the spinner has two sides depending upon which side you're playing. So the first side is going to be rhyming bingo. And so that's the one with the black edges. It has black edges around the spinner as well as black edges around the words themselves. You will choose the black. You will place the black tiles on face up on the table all the players will take turns putting those tiles in their bingo boards like so okay you'll fill up the entire board and then you will spin the spinner and the whole objective is to get three in a row so as the individual spins. You could also do this with an alternate spinner if you have students with complex bodies and you can just use a dry erase board to, or or the images themselves and you could duplicate that on a dry erase or on an alternate spinner. So just know that mobility is not something to impede you in this game. But after this, after this, after it is spun, the players will then check their bingo cards for a word that rhymes with the spinner card. So you as the instructor, the communication partner would say that word. So if the word spun was, let's say log, log, we spun log, you would say log. And the players would then look for the tile that might rhyme with that word. So in this case, we may, we could say dog, Map block, hmm, log, log. Which one rhymes with log? So they could either identify it on here or they could identify it on their device for some extra language practice. And if they don't have a free, if they don't have a rhyming word, you can still place a free spot, a free marker. It comes with markers on your. So for this game, that is how you play with a rhyming word way. Three in a row wins, or you could fill your board depending upon how long you have. But it's a great one for just rhyming practice. Then if you flip it over, you flip all the cards over, you have the non-blackboardered side. And you can play the exact same way, except when you spin this time, instead of matching the rhyming words, you'll match the word with the same sound. So we're working on that phonological awareness again and um, sound blending. So if we spun on this side, if we spun glass, glass, which one sounds like glass, gl, gl, and we could even break it down, right? We could work on the g, g, even if we needed to. Um, you can also make your own picture cards too. So these are just some standard little cardstock and um, in, in shapes, but you could put your own cardstock in here. You could also, thinking from a language speech perspective, you could also use the symbols that are on the student's device for some extra support and just print those on cardstock and then print them to be, I think it's about an inch and a half by an inch and a half, but you could measure that out and then laminate them or just, just print them on cardstock. And then those could pop in here as well so that you're giving that extra support for sound awareness. You could do sound um, endings as well for words. So very versatile, very supportive. Lingo Bingo, it is one that I think is super fun, especially if you're already playing bingo in your classroom. And these, I would say these are fairly flexible pictures as far as ages go. It says five and up, but again, like you could recreate these using image like real photographs and images of older individuals um, for for some of your older classrooms if you need that support as well so lingo bingo check it out it is from learning resources we have it in the irc or feel free to make your own and enjoy <laughs> Thank you.